If you needed any, any reminder, today is a startling example of how broken Harrisburg is. This is really ridiculous. Senator Corman and Scarnati, Leader Reed, Speaker Terzai, they have just basically said today, we've just wasted three months. I have been here, I have been here every day but one day since I was inaugurated in January. I have not taken any time off. We have wasted three months. They made it beyond clear through their inaction that they take uh, the interests of special interests above the interests of school children and schools and Pennsylvania's future. That is absolutely unacceptable to me. What Senator Corman said in his press conference, as I understand it a few minutes ago, is just completely a misrepresentation of what happened today. Never in my life, and I've been in negotiations throughout my adult life, I have never been in negotiations like this. Today, I put on the table historic reforms on pensions and liquor. Pensions and liquor, two things that they say are very important to them. On pensions, I put into place a plan that had a 401k component, I put into place a plan, or on the table, a plan that would save over $20 billion. I did that. I also put on the table a plan that would send to a private manager the liquor stores, wholesale and retail. I put that on the table today, and what did I get in return? Nothing. I got nothing on severance tax, nothing. I got nothing on education, nothing. I got nothing on property tax relief, and I got nothing. I got nothing on how we're gonna actually balance this budget. We're gonna to continue to have the credit downgrades we've had because we're not doing anything else uh, differently than we've done. It's a status quo. It's what we've been doing over the past. Again, it's redux. I'm not gonna stand for it. I don't think the people of Pennsylvania should stand for it. This is beyond pathetic, and I think we need to change. We need to move forward. Let me turn this over to Senator Jay Costa, who's gonna give his own. He was at the meeting this morning, too. Well, thank you very much, Governor. Thank you all for being here today. And let me first start out by saying that I want to applaud the Governor for having the courage to put on the table what he's deemed and we agree are historic reforms in two of the major areas where our colleagues in the Republican Party want us to address before we get to a budget solution. That is pensions and wine and spirit modernization or privatization. With respect to the pension, let me be clear. These proposals that the Governor's put on the table are things that are very difficult for our members to be able to sit there and say, we want to do this. But we recognize that we're at a point in time where it's imperative that we sit down and have serious and honest negotiations about what needs to be done. We recognize that we have folks in education, human services community, and other throughout this Commonwealth that need to get a budget solution, get something done with regard to our budget. The fact of the matter is these proposals have been on the table. We, they intend to run a stopgap budget that only finds things at one third of what they did in 1182, 1192. But at the end of the day, we have proposals on the table that are significant. When you talk about the pension piece, clearly in Senate Bill 1, there are at least three items in the pension bill that are similar to what the governor or what the Republicans put on the table with respect to Senate Bill 1. They're there. This anti-spiking, the shared risk, and also the option for revenue neutrality. When you look to the DC component, the defined contribution component, it's there. It's there for the members, new employees that opted into that particular program. That's what's on the table. These are things that are difficult for Democrats to get their arms around. Same thing with respect, with respect to the wine and spirit privatization conversation that we're taking place. But we recognize. And our caucus recognized, and I know our colleagues in the House Democratic Caucus recognize, we have a greater obligation. We have an obligation to the people of Pennsylvania to get a budget done and get it done as soon as possible, not play games with stopgap budgets. We know we have to make investments in education and restore the dollars that have been cut that have resulted in dramatic reductions in performance in our Commonwealth and making certain that we educate our kids and not just basic and K to 12, but also early learning and also higher education in our community colleges. We have to make those investments because it's been disinvested for the past four years. We suffered the consequences. With respect to our human service agencies, quite frankly, I, I'm, I'm amazed at the hypocrisy of the Republican colleagues who today are going to say they're going to stand up and protect human service programs and social service agencies, when for the past four years they've done nothing but cut those programs, and then no regard and no respect for those services that are provided to our seniors across this Commonwealth, for our most needy folks who need those services. No regard for them for the past, past four years, but today they want to stand up and protect them? That's hypocrisy, in my view. We want to make historic investments along those lines because they need to be done. We need to restore those levels of funding that we can provide those services. Job creation programs along those lines. We promoting, we've been promoting a number of these issues. And the governor's put on the table a couple of other things. He's looking for a Marcellus Shale extraction tax. And their response to that has been zero. Zero. 
no money from Marcellus at all. To me, that's wrong. The people of Pennsylvania elected this gentleman to be governor because they wanted him to make investments in education, and they wanted him to look to this Marcellus community to be part of the solution, part of the solution. They've rejected that. They're standing with the special interest at the expense of our kids and at the expense of our seniors. That's got to change. That's why Senate Democrats stand strongly and squarely with Governor, Governor Wolf to be able to move forward and do what needs to be done along those lines.